Hi there, this is tutorial 4 for the Edexcel Statistics 1 A-Level module and it's on quartiles and percentiles. Uh, and as always, for further help with your studies, do check out youtube.com slash Maths. So, just a brief recap of what you should know from your GCSEs about measures of spread. Um, and one of which you would have learned very early on was the range and that was the highest value in a data set take away the lowest value in a data set and it basically told you how spread out the data was now that's not really useful considering uh, any outliers or extreme values will have a massive effect on the range so we tended to look at something a little bit more useful and that was called the interquartile range and the interquartile range, it split the data set into four equal parts, each of which had 25% of the data. And we had the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile. Now, at A level, you'll find that the lower quartile is often referred to as Q1. The median can sometimes be referred to as Q2. And the upper quartile is mostly referred to as Q3. And when we were working out the interquartile range, we did Q3 take away Q1, or the upper quartile take away the lower quartile. And that told us how spread out the data was for the middle 50% of data. And by doing that, it took out any problems we would come across with, the, uh, with any extreme values. So let's take a look at how we calculate the interquartile range for discrete data. Now, um, Bear in mind that there's lots of different ways of working out quartiles. Um, so it's important that you know which method is used for your exam board. Now, I'm going to explain how Edexcel do it. Um, if you're interested, you can look at this web page here, and that will give you an idea of some of the other methods which are used in statistics. Um, as for AQA and OCR, I'm not sure what method they use. But for discrete data, we do it like this. So to find the lower quartile, you take the number of values in the data set and you divide it by four. If you get a whole number, you choose that value. If you don't get a whole number, you choose the next value up. So in other words, you round up to the next value. For the upper quartile, you do three times the number of uh, values in the data set, divide that by four. And again, if it's a whole number, you choose that value. If it's not whole, you choose the next value up. Okay, so you're always rounding up when you don't have a whole number. So let's see it in action now. Okay, so I've got a data set here, which I've pre-ordered, and I want to work out the interquartile range. So following on from what we just did, to find Q1, we do the number of values in the data set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I'm going to have 11 values, and I'm going to divide that by 4, which gives me 2.75. Now, as you can see, it's not whole number. It's 2.75. It's not a whole number. So I'm going to choose the next value up. So I'm actually going to choose the third value okay so counting along one two three I'm going to choose three for Q3 we do three times n and divide that by four so we do three times 11 and we divide that by four which is 33 divided by four which gives me 8.25 and again, we round up, so I'm going to look at the ninth value. So looking at the ninth value and counting along, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the ninth value is 10. So the interquartile range, I'll just write it as IQR for shorthand, is 10, take away 3, which gives us 7. Okay, let's have a look now at how we would find the interquartile range for a discrete data set that's given in a frequency table. So we got the number of TVs per household in a sample taken from New York, and I want to find the interquartile range. Now, when you're given a frequency table like this, it's always a good idea to work out the cumulative frequency. So working out the cumulative frequency here really quickly. And now we're going to follow the same method like we did before. 
So for Q1, it's the number of points in the data set, which is 195. So 195 divided by 4. So 195 divided by 4 gives us 48.75. Rounding up, that gives me the 49th term, okay? 49th term. Okay, so let's have a look and see where that 49th term falls. Uh, we've got 3 here, 21, then it jumps up to 85. So if I had 21 before and then I had 85, that means the 49th term landed in here. So that means it must be 2. So Q1 is 2. Now let's have a look at Q3. So to get Q3, we're going to do 3 times 195 divided by 4. Doing that on the calculator, 3 times 195 divided by 4 is 3 times 195 divided by 4 is 146.25. So again, rounding up to the next term, 147. So I want term number 147. So looking at my data set, where does that happen? This point we got 85, then I've got 158. That means 147 must have landed in here. So Q3 must be equal to 3. So the interquartile range is 3 take away 2, which in this case is 1. So that means the middle 50% of the data set is only separated by 1. Okay, time for you to have a go, so pause the video now and see if you can work out the interquartile range for these data sets and the frequency table. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at those. I'm going to show you the solutions now. So for the first one, the interquartile range was 8 and for the second one, the interquartile range was 3. So if you're not sure, just pause the video, have a look at my calculations there and see if you can figure out what went wrong. Okay, interquartile range for continuous data is a far more commonly asked question in the A-level. So do be aware of this. And it's done the exact same way as we found the median for continuous data. So if you've watched the video on grouped data where I show how to find the median, um, this shouldn't be too difficult to get your head around. Um, and as I uh, state there in red, do not round when you do your n divided by 4 or 3n divided by 4. Do not round the answer. Uh, and the importance of the boundaries is absolutely crucial So when you're doing your calculations. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so we got a frequency table here, group frequency table, and we're asked to find the interquartile range. As always, it's good to work out the cumulative frequency. So work out the cumulative frequency first and foremost, and then we can go from there. So I want to find Q1, which is going to be N, yeah, 31 pieces of data divided by four. And 31 divided by four gives us 7.75. So let's have a look at my data set here. Where is the 7.75th person? Well, the first frequency is 13. So that means seven, I only want 7.75 of that 13. So let's draw a little diagram to kind of represent what's going on here. The lower boundary must be 12.5, okay? Because there's a gap in these. Uh, they were rounded to the nearest whole number. That means the lowest bound must be 12.5. Again, if you're not sure where that came from, do look back on the video on grouped data. Uh, the upper bound must be 15.5. And now I'm going to write down what the class width was. So what is the gap between 12.5 and 15.5? So 
it's three. And how many people is this class interval represented by? It's represented by 13 people. Okay, but I don't want the whole class with, I only want 7.75 of those 13 people. So in other words, I only want 7.75 out of the 13 of that class width, which is three. And like before, we always add on this lower bound at the end to tell us exactly where we are. So bringing up the calculator, I'm going to put it in exactly as I see it here. So opening a bracket, we get 7.75 out of 13 times by 3 and add on that lower bound. When we put that in, we get 14.288 and it seems to go on there a little bit. So I'm just going to keep it to two decimal places. So 14.29. So that's Q1. Q3 is going to be done in a similar manner. So let's find out where Q3 actually occurs. Q3 is going to give, is going to come from excuse me. Q3 is going to come from the 3 times 31 over 4. So where does that happen? 3 times 31, divide that by 4, and we get 23.25. 23.25. So it's the 23rd point two fifth person. So let's look at our cumulative frequency now. At this point, I've got 19. At this point, I've got 24. So I don't want all of this class interval. I need, well, 19 plus another 4.25. So I want 4.25 out of this interval here. So I'll bring up a diagram again. Now, so we want 4.25 of this class interval which goes from 18.5 to 21.5 so 18.5 to 21.5 21.5 so that gives us a class interval of 3 and how many people is represented in that class interval 5 people so I don't want the whole five people because that would be uh, incorrect. I only want 4.25 out of those five people. So like before, we write what we want out of the class interval, 4.25 people out of the whole group, multiply it by the class width, and then add on that lower bound which is 18.5 so bring up the calculator okay so we need 4.25 out of 5 multiply that by 3 and then add on that lower bound That gives us 21.05. So the interquartile range is going to be the upper quartile, take away the lower quartile. So 21.05 take away 14.29 that gives us to three significant figures 6.76 now 
just a reminder in the textbook it does all of these problems using interpolation but i'm not a huge fan of how that works because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense why you, why it's done in that way uh, i prefer the proportion method and if you're unsure about how this is done do look back in the video on grouped data okay one more example to do um again we're looking to find the interquartile range here so as always i'm going to work out a cumulative frequency first so now i have the cumulative frequency i need to find where q1 occurs so q1 is going to be the total number of data 31 divided by 4 which is going to give me 7.75 so i'm looking for the 7.75th person so looking at my cumulative frequency at this point i've got six at this point i've got 15. so i'm going to need another 1.75 so 6 plus 1.75 will give me the number of people i'm looking for so so we'll start by drawing a diagram again here and then remember i want this class into i'm interested in this class interval here which goes from 30 to 35 okay there's an overlap and that effectively means if you remember from the video before 30 less than or equal to the time but less than 35 so it means the class interval goes from 30 to 35 and that class interval then is obviously a width of 5 it has a width of 5 35 take away 30 gives me 5 and it's represented by 9 people but I don't want all nine people. I only want 1.75 of those nine. So I'm going to do 1.75 out of nine because that's the proportion of the class width I want. Multiply that by the class width and then add on that lower bound. So bringing up the calculator. So 1.75 out of 9, multiply that by 3, and then add on that lower bound. And that gives me 30.583 recurring. So two decimal places, 30.58 will do. And that tells me exactly where that 7.75th person would be. He's probably somewhere around here at this point. That would be 30.58. So that's Q1. And in a similar fashion, we're going to work out Q3. Again, we got to work out where Q3 comes from. So it's 3 times 31 divided by 4. So bringing out the calculator, 3 times 31, divide that by 4, we get 23.25. So I want 23.25 person. Where does that happen? Again, you'll actually see, let's go back to our uh, cumulative frequency. That's 15 and that's 26. So I'm not going to want all up as far as 26. I only want to go as far as 23.25. So I'll have that 15. And what do I need to make it 23.25? I need another eight. So 8.25. So let's draw our diagram again. And the boundary for this class interval goes from 35 to 40. The class width again is five and it's represented 
by 11 people. So there's 11 people in that interval. I don't want all 11 people. I only want 8.25 of them. So it's going to be 8.25 out of the 11 people multiplied by the class width, which is 5. I've just realized I've made a little mistake here. This should not be 3. It should be 5. That's what I get for poor handwriting. I'll correct that in a second. Um, 8.25 out of 11. Multiply by 5 and then add on that lower bound. So open the brackets, 8.25 over 11, multiply that by 5, and then add on the lower bound, 35, gives me 38.75. 38.75. Okay, let's just go back and correct that answer there. So it should have been... 1.75 over 9 multiply by 5 not the 3 I put in originally plus 30 gives us 30.972 so let's just change that to 30.97 so the interquartile range is going to be the upper quartile Q3 take away Q1, so interquartile range is going to be equal to 38.75, take away 30.97, gives us 7.78, and that's finding the interquartile range. Okay, we've got some examples for you to do, so I'll bring up the next uh, question for you guys to pause the video and then have, an, have a go at it. Pause the video and work out the interquartile range. Okay, I'll just bring up the solution now. So, there is the answer. Uh, Q3, or Q1, worked out to be 27.25. Q3 was 38, so we did 38, take away 27.25, gave us 10.75. And another question for you to attempt. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at that question. So here is the solution to this one. The interquartile range to three significant figures I have as 16.5. Seven. So if you're not sure where these answers came from, pause the video, see if you can work out uh, my calculations and where I'm getting my numbers from, and do look at the previous examples if you're not getting it right. Okay, on to percentiles now. Now, with, with the interquartile range, we uh, broke down the data sets into four equal parts, quartiles or quarters. Well, with percentiles, we can actually split a data set into 100 parts. And we can use that to work out what's called the interpercentile range. And that comes by working out the uh, whatever the nth percentile, take away the nth percentile. Now, it's not a whole lot different uh, from what we've been doing already. The example hopefully will explain exactly how to do it. So we're looking to work out the 10% to 90% range. So in other words, what I'm trying to work out is P90 take away P10. As always, we've got a frequency table, so I'm going to work out the cumulative frequency. So I've got 31 pieces of data in total. So I need to know where does that, where does P10 lie? So where does that 10th percentile lie? Well, that means I need 10% of the 31 people. 
So working out 10% of 31, we get 3.1. So I need 3.1 of these total of this total group. So let's go to my frequency table. Um, this uh, first interval here contains 13 people, but I don't want 13 people. I only want 3.1 of those people. So again, we'll draw our little diagram and just represent all the information here. So the lower bound is 12.5. The upper bound is 15.5. The class width, therefore, is 3. And that class width is represented of 13 people. So I don't normally put the circle around there. The class width is three, and that's for 13 people in total, but I don't want all 13 people, I only want 3.1 of them. So that's the proportion of that class width I'm interested in. So I want 3.1 out of the 13, multiplied by the class width, because that tells me how much of it I want, and then I add on that lower bound to tell me exactly where I'm at. So 3.1, bring up the brackets, out of 13, multiply that by 3, close the brackets, and then add on 12.5, which gives me 13.21, or 22 to two decimal places. 13.22 to two decimal places. Okay, let's work out the 90th percentile. So P90 is going to be 90% of the total number of people in the table. So 90% of 31, 90% uh, of uh, 31, or 3.1 multiplied by 9 in this case, gives me 27.9. So, 27.9 people. Okay, now looking here, I've got 27 people, but I need 27.9 people, so I'm going to need another 0 0.9 to bring it up to total. So, I'm looking at this class interval here. So drawing the diagram again, and it goes from 24.5 all the way up to 27.5, and that's for a total uh, class interval or a uh, class width of three. So the class width once again here is three. And that's for a total number of four people. Four people. Now, I don't need all four people. I need 0 0.9 of them. So that's a proportion I'm going to use. I need 0 0.9 out of the four of that class width, which is three. And then if I add on that lower bound, after I've done that calculation, that will tell me exactly where I'm at. So bring up the calculator, open the bracket, 0 0.9, divided by 4, multiplied by 3, and add on that 24.5. So I'm putting it into the calculator exactly as I'd see it. Hit enter, and we get 25.18 to two decimal places. 20 25.18 to two decimal places, yeah? Okay, so that means P of 90, take away the P10, or, or the 10th percentile, is going to be 25.18, take away 13.22, 
So 25.18 take away 13.22 gives us 11.96. If I want to go to three decimal places, I can. That would take it up to 12.0. I'm just going to write down 11.96 in this case. 11.96. And that's how you work out a percentile range. Okay, time for you to have a go at a question. So pause the video now and work out the 10% to 80% range. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at those questions. So here are the solutions. So I worked out the 10%, uh, 10 percentile, which gave me 23.5. I worked out the 80th percentile, which was 43.44. And then after I did a subtraction, I got 19.9 to three significant figures. Right, so you should now be able to complete exercise 3A and 3B of the Edexcel S1 textbook and um, do have a read through the chapters as well and um, see how you get on with those questions as i said before the way it's explained to work out uh, interquartile range and percentiles uses interpolation uh, i'm not a fan so um my method should work perfectly um and get you the same answers anyway best of luck with revision um and i'll talk to you again sometime thank you